you bought the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte, did you make a mistake? Let's see if the 16 gigabyte one, that's this one right here. I'm probably one of the very few people that actually bought one. You can see on the box right here, it says 16 gigabytes right over here. This is the 4060 Ti Pro Art. We're gonna test it in some games and see, is this a lot better for a hundred bucks? Or did you do the right thing by buying the eight gigabyte version? Spoiler alert, I don't think you did, and I don't think this is a good idea either. The pricing is terrible. What it should have been is that this version here, which the MSRP of the regular ones are $499, this should have been $399 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. That would have been actually a pretty good GPU. And I think over time, as this GPU ages alongside its eight gigabyte counterpart, that one is not gonna age very well at all. But as the pricing on this guy, the 16 gigabyte version actually goes down, this may not be a very bad GPU. It actually performs pretty good. In games where that you know VRAM buffer actually becomes an issue, this one will perform better. That's gonna be one of the biggest things comparing GPUs nowadays. VRAM, either you need it or you don't. There are a lot of games that you simply don't need to have extra VRAM, at least not more than eight gigabytes, especially at like 1080p. But there are a lot of games, especially as you start going up into 1440p, that you will need more VRAM. And it's reasonable to think if you spent 500 bucks on a GPU like this, you're gonna want 1440p most likely even though 1080p is still fine, especially high refresh. So let's take a look at this in two different games. It's two examples. One game, you do have an issue with VRAM, and we're going to see if this version performs better. The other game, you don't really have as big of an issue with the VRAM allocation. So then you're basically going to be okay with either one. You get like similar performance, and that does happen in a lot of games. So the first game is one I've been playing recently, Ratchet and Clank. We're going to put this on a 13900KS, both GPUs tested on the same system with 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is going to be on the Z790 Hero, so we can really sort of test where the difference would be. We're going to put this on 1440. P and we're basically gonna you know max out the graphics. We're gonna put everything on you know on ultra, very high, and we're also going to put ray tracing on. This game is actually pretty demanding, but it does look pretty awesome. And as you can see, the 8 gigabyte 4060 Ti really struggles in that sort of like low 20, 25 FPS range, average like 22 FPS. I think it's running up against that VRAM buffer. In order to get just a much smoother experience, you're gonna have to drop probably ray tracing. You're gonna have to drop a lot of these graphics settings down a considerable amount. If we switch over to the 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti, you can see it's a much bigger difference. You're getting over 40 FPS, basically the same level, same settings. You can see the VRAM is going way over eight gigabytes. You can see the allocation as well as the actual VRAM usage. This game easily at 1440p will even go over the 12 gigabyte allocation, meaning a 4070 may even start to struggle in a lot of places, not to mention a 4070 Ti because it's gonna run up against that sort of VRAM buffer. Obviously, you would want at least a 16 gigabyte 
gigabyte GPU at 1440p to really max this game out without having any type of performance issues. On the 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti, if we turn on DLSS 3, actually the VRAM allocation seems to go up, but the performance is very smooth. It almost doubles it basically. now in the 80s for frames per second and this is actually a very good gaming experience like you can play on a 1440p monitor 80 to 90 fps and you're going to have a pretty good time on a $500 GPU now even though this should be 399 at least the performance here isn't really faltering if we go back and compare this to a 4060 Ti with the LSS3 you're literally at like half the performance seen enough. Reinforcement capacity at 42%. East Wing has fallen into prisoner control. Not the VIP section. The VRAM is really a significant issue in this game. As you can see, even with DLSS 3 on quality with frame generation, you're barely hitting still in the 40s, maybe 50s once in a while, but it's way below 80 frames per second that the 16 gigabyte GPU is getting. It's pretty easy to explain this. Look up on the top left and you can see the VRAM allocation going to like, you know, 12 gigabytes, almost 13 gigabytes, and a lot of it being used, 11, 12 being used on that 16 gigabyte GPU. GPU, and then when you look at it from the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte, that's a massive, massive difference. You're going from like, you know, 7 to 8 gigabytes to, you know, 12 or 13 being utilized. So very big difference. And that sort of explains in any game that you're going to run up against these VRAM issues, you're actually going to have significantly better performance on the 4060 Ti. It's almost like double the performance in this case. And it really it puts it at an entire tier of GPU above the 4060 Ti 8 gigabytes. And I wouldn't be surprised if it actually gets pretty close to some higher end GPUs as well, simply because of that VRAM limitation, especially the 12 gigabyte GPUs. Now, to show you a game where it didn't really matter as much, Cyberpunk 2077 on the 4060 Ti 8 gigabytes, you happen to get maybe around 60, 63 FPS, but you can see the VRAM allocation and the usage stay below 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Even with you know ray tracing on ultra it doesn't really seem to go up a significant amount over that now if we head over to the 4060 ti 16 gigabyte you can see the performance is actually very very similar doesn't really go much over the 8 gigabytes of vram that's where you're going to see as an example a lot of games that actually are fairly well optimized by this point and really stay under the 8 gigabyte vram buffer <laughs> Huh. 
16 gigabyte version actually becomes significantly better in those scenarios, then you're not going to see that big of a difference between the 8 gigabyte version and the 16 gigabyte version. But when you encounter those games that actually do use a lot of VRAM, the 16 gigabyte version actually becomes significantly better in those scenarios. And then in my opinion, that $100 almost seems worth it, even though I don't think it's worth it when you look at the overall landscape of the GPUs in general. When comparing to the 8 gigabyte version, if you're in a store and you're about to spend 400 bucks, I would probably spend another 100 just to make sure that you're not going to have these VRAM issues. 1080p can have it too, even though 1440p certainly shows it more. So that shows you how 8 gigabytes of VRAM simply is not enough. Even with the limited memory bus of 128 bits like this 4060 Ti has on the 16 gigabyte version, it's still enough to have more VRAM and have better performance. That's why the 12 gigabyte 4070 and 4070 Ti, they're disappointing because of their VRAM. Otherwise, they would be pretty fantastic as well. Even though the 4070 certainly is better because of the price, it hits a little bit better price to performance than the 4070 Ti. We should really be seeing 16 gigabyte GPUs in that price range and something like the 4080 should have likely been like 20 gigabytes or something like that but that's a discussion for another day at least here you can see some results between two similar but also different VRAM GPUs all right guys let me know what you think down below remember to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video